Well, we don't have some fun for you guys tonight. We've got Kenty on the screen. We're back here for NRL 360 and my reaction to their show today uh, after the big weekend of footy. Obviously, a few controversial topics, a few things happened, and a couple of teams that are actually struggling a little bit in the Storm and also the Eels. So we'll briefly talk about those guys as well. But we're going to kick it off with the strange news of the uh, what Manly have come out and done with... Yeah, bringing out the um, the pride jerseys for this round without consulting any of the players, and it's definitely a contentious topic and and something that I personally think that they should definitely be uh, speaking to everyone about because everyone has different views on these certain things, and you know no matter what you think on this one, uh, you should definitely be speaking to your collection or group of players uh, before doing anything like that. But um, we'll just Kenty actually saying something half decent, which is good. We'll check this out. To inflict their own political views on the players who may not share that and are now being forced to deal the consequences of that is a real oversight from the Manly Club and it's something that they should be embarrassed about. Yeah. Well, a tough couple of days ahead of, as you said, Michael, they're meeting at the moment, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out and if they do wear the jersey on Thursday night from ecstasy to... No chance they wear that jersey, surely. Like, if there's seven players that are taking uh, some issue with it or, yeah, they have the issue might be that they didn't consult them about it. Uh, there's no chance they wear that jersey. I think they definitely play. There's some talk that they won't. Uh, I think they'll sort it out. Obviously, you know, being three days away, uh, they'll sort it out. But definitely sounds like there's been a bit of back and forth as well. So not a great look for Manly in this one. Um, just consult your players. Simple. <laughs> All right, I just quickly wanted to play this clip from James Graham reacting to... Uh, when the penalty was actually blown or when they went up to the bunker and they and they gave it just thought it was an interesting clip That's a disgrace. That, is a disgrace. Game. that has been a balaclava a sort of shotgun and someone's gone up to townsville and robbed the tigers of two points down so why did why was the game <laughs> just love hearing his accent to be fair um but true very true Ashley Klein got it wrong in terms of the escort penalty mm. and the Tigers should have won the game. So for a club that is routinely dragged through the mud, kicked in the guts, a lot of time because of their own doing and their own mistakes, for them to be robbed of two competition points against a heavyweight like the Cowboys, pick whatever adjective you want, joke, fast, shambles, you can understand why Tigers members and fans I today the feel as though they've been kicked in the gut. I get the emotion. Very fair there. Hoops just showing a, a bit of emotion around it. Um, definitely didn't deserve it, as I spoke in my previous video today. Oh, uh, yesterday, sorry, that, um, yeah, they just didn't deserve it. And that's it, really. So what else can you say? Wrong call. As Anderson came out and said it was the incorrect call. Klein will, you know, there'll be some issues for him in terms of his job and stuff like that, I'd imagine. So... You know, obviously, it's, it's sad for Tigers fans, for the club, for the effort they put in for that 80 minutes, 80 and a bit minutes. Is that too much? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, Klein's head probably roll. Um, there'll be some some issues with the referees in general, so they'll, they'll cop what they need to. Um, that's all we can really say. <laughs> all right, now it's time for a bit of a laugh. And Asa just says how much he thinks it's a joke that uh that call happened and we get to listen to kenty happy days everyone enjoy get your popcorn it was horrible i just thought they got it so wrong i thought they got it so wrong let's let's get right into this kenty because we've, we've kind yeah, of yeah i'm not as strong as you you're I not actually, as strong as me no I, I actually i think the referee will climb you could argue you got it right <laughs> yeah. Graham, Graham actually yeah. couldn't well, even argue was, that he got it right you're in fairyland mate in what instance, Mike Kenty? How, how can explain you explain that to us? It, just the because... <laughs> oh, probably the only bloke in Australia that thinks it was uh, that it was the right call. And he goes, I won't show the footage. Don't I think, don't think I can. But he, he goes on to show that Felt's running in this straight line towards the ball, and Capella's gone from the sideline. Obviously, he's had to come in, and and he's pointing. They've got the they've got it showing where the ball's going to land, like the the slipstream kind of thing. We say tracker. Um, as to where the ball's going to land. And it shows that Kapoa is obviously running inwards, in, in field a little bit. And you know, he, the way he's describing it is that he has he should be running in that direct line to where the ball's going to land. And then I says like, well, how the hell does he know where the ball's going to land? At this point, it, you, you'd assume 
being you know at that 10 meter line or the 40 meter line uh that the ball's going to land somewhere around there so he's ran inwards at that angle to try and get to that ball and then it's obviously a bit longer so he's turned at that point and he actually sort of like felt it actually looks even worse you know, every time i see it with felt actually he's running that line and then just at the last second he just darts in and and basically shoulders um Kapoa over and that's why they both end up you know going each, you know, a few meters either side there you can see in the in the footage but yeah full on that he actually thinks it could be um turned back because yeah and, and he's also his other thing was that uh, yeah, like he knew where he was. And, and even if he did, right, even if he did, it doesn't matter because that's a non-call every other day of the week. So it should be a non-call here. And, and they, so the referee boss came out and said it was um, incorrect anyway. So that was that. We're actually going to move on to just a, another, just a bizarre thing here with uh, Kevin Proctor, which was something he did at halftime. He isn't playing at the moment, but just a very interesting one here. Kevin Proctor. <laughs> if there is any question what's wrong at the Gold Coast, it's the fact that one of the players, I know he wasn't playing, but he was 19th man before the game, is vaping at halftime and putting it on social media. Now, where their heads are at, I have no idea. But that club is doing a lot of soul searching right at the moment, trying to figure out why they are where they are. They are equal last with the Tigers. And this is part of the culture of the joint. Now, he got sacked today after that, so at least they've started. It's very true. And yes, get it. He's not he's not playing, but it is a, he actually was right on this one. It is the culture of the club and, and building that. And, and we actually see, I, I know a lot, a lot of my mates and stuff vape and um, clients vape too. Uh, and you see like their, their cardio is terrible, for example, like compared to where it it is if they haven't vaped recently, for example, and stuff like that. So even that, you know, training wise and stuff, it's not going to be as ideal, but yeah, again, like you said, they go out and drink alcohol and stuff and, and you yeah, know, it's going to have similar effects, but yeah, to put it on social media was, was the, the silly thing uh, in all of it. But again, if you're a, if you're a club that's struggling, maybe if you, you know, your leadership comes out, he isn't, he's a part of the leadership group. Will he, yeah, he's been captain there. Uh, in previous years and stuff like that. It's obviously not a, a great look to be putting that on social media. Pretty silly, to be honest with you. Um, but if you are, if you're going out and putting performances on the board, there shouldn't really be any issue with what you do off the field. There's a interesting, there was an interesting story. They, um, I think it was a Ben or something said about Justin Hodges. He'd go out and, and party and stuff like that in a field. Oh no, Denon Camp was talking about it. And a few of the boys would go out and try and do the same thing. And, but you know, they came back and, and Hodges would absolutely dominate every week and the other boys that went out with him would not. Uh, so they got banned from doing it and Hodjo could do it because he could actually back it up. And that's really what anyone ever cares about is if you can go out and play as, as good as possible, then um, you know, all power to you go and do what you want. If you're, if, you're, if you're here, you're prepared and you do the, you do the best job possible, then great. But obviously Proctor's... Um, unfortunately, hasn't been getting much game time this year, so yeah, he probably doesn't care too much at the moment. But it's a bit strange that he was in such a leadership position and then is in uh, yeah, is, is acting like this. So it's a bit sad. Um, but he yeah, he's been sacked now. So again, there's always conse consequences to everything we do. So he's um, he's dealing with that now. All right, just a little bit from Cooper Cronk about the Storm and where they're at at the moment. Obviously, a few uh, issues at the moment. Interesting to see what he says and if they can turn around. And two weeks in a row. Yep. It's happened four weeks in a row. How, how do they change it? Well, two thousand. Can they change it? Two thousand twelve lost four or five in a row. Went on. Did to they have the seven. better roster in two thousand twelve? They do now. Oh, yes. that's that's up for grabs. But, but the system, ne the system did. never yeah. changed. Yeah. The system hasn't changed. But the They're... system's not where it was then. Now it looks to be not that way. Well, for me, it's I think they know because what what did they do last year? What have they done this year? Yeah. If one games dominant games, they know how to do it. So it's up to the senior players to find that. It's not as if yeah. it's like something that's foreign to them. They've ridden a bike, you know how to get back on the bike yeah. and ride it. But they need to drill down to the hard parts. They know it's there, um, and if they find the right answers in terms yeah. of what I just mentioned, they'll they'll get there. What I worry about. I love how it just simply makes it sound. That's true though. They they've been there before. They know what to do to to get back to. You know where they've been in the past and they have the talent to be able to do it it's just you know we could all go through some kind of slump in in a team for sure and what like what they said i think you were saying in, in 2012 was the he went you know to bellamy i think bellamy was losing it a little bit uh losing faith anyway in, in his coaching and stuff like that and Kronk said no no you're good let's go let's let's turn it around and and they all made a conscious decision to do that and a lot of it just comes from you know the effort on defense and 
and and just getting back to basics like that. And, and all it takes is for these guys to get one win on the board and actually feel like they're playing decent and they'll be back to it. So it's going to be interesting over the next few weeks to see what actually happens. So we move just to our last bit of the video, just talking a little bit around the eel situation at the moment. Uh, the Eels, consistently in inconsistent. They play Penrith this week. Mm. Where are they going wrong? Can they hit back? Well, it's hard to pick, right? They've dusted, what, Storm, you know, Panthers. Yeah, you know, they had a blinder against the Roosters probably five weeks ago, which arguably the best performance of the year. But the thing for me is they look like they've got superstars across the paddock. They can turn it on whenever they want. But currently they are the 10th best defensive team you're not going to get a prelim final being the mm. uh, 10th best defensive team. You know, 10th for missed tackles, 13th for line break concedes, and the second... That's it. Done. That's that's where it is. Like, we know it every each and every year that the the, you have to have a, a top five defensive team to, to win any comp any in any sport anywhere around the world, and for them to be in 10th is, is not good enough. And they have been a team in the past that, that has been a, a top few defensive team, and um, you know, 10th is not going to cut the mustard. So they have, as you said, they have have had big wins against some of the biggest teams. Like they've recorded Panthers' only loss of the year, for example. So there's definitely an opportunity to turn around, but it, it comes in their attitude in, defense, in the defensive line. And um, do I think they can do it? I don't think so, because they've shown each, each of the last bunch of years that they're close, but they're not close enough. And they're probably performing a little bit worse this year. And it's actually gonna be interesting when they're losing Papa Lee, they're losing Reed Marnie, this is their year to do it. And I just don't know if they can actually you know, get across, uh, get over that hump. So very, very interesting times at both the Storm and the Eels. But anywho guys, that is the video reacting to NRL 360. We had a little bit of a uh, little bit of everything in that one, a little bit of decent discussion, a little bit of funniness with um, with Kenty as always and, and the Proctor thing. Um, and then yeah, a few of the teams that are in a, a bit of strife at the moment. So. That's that video. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Like, subscribe. I appreciate you all for being here, and we'll catch you in the next video. See you later.